Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 219. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Cat. Hey guys, I made it on again. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. What about yourself, Norman? I'm good, I'm good. It's just, uh, I- I'm noticing something every time when we do a podcast, I have this kind of sore throat or just my throat's not feeling too good, I want to cough and whatnot, and it's annoying. I think you're allergic to podcasting, Norman. Your body's trying to tell you to stop! Never! And our guest for this week is... Finn the Human. Very Finn the Pony! <laughs> <laughs> what is up, Ronnie's Adventure Time fans? Hello, Finn. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm good, just for the confusing throat thingy I mentioned earlier before, and confusing your name. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I get that a lot. A lot of people think that I'm just Finn the Human as a pony, but that's actually completely false. Oh, is I it? Have a different backstory. Yep. Well, that answers the question that I was going to ask. Mm-hmm. But tell us, why? what's the concept for Finn the Pony? Well, I don't want to reveal too much because I have a whole backstory written out that I'm going to reveal when I reach a certain subscriber limit. But the whole point is I start off as a completely different character, okay? I'm, I wasn't born Finn the Pony. I was born as a completely different character, and then I undergo a transformation, and out, sort of like an alicorn hood, I guess, but a little easier to earn, and then I become Finn the Bone. Uh, oh, sweet. I'm looking yeah. forward to that, then. So I was wondering for a while. Yeah. All right, you know, I'm noticing that you don't have a deviant art, or... I do have a deviant art, actually. Huh. You, know, you didn't link it to your YouTube, so that's very... Do it. Link it to the YouTube. That's how people know where you are. <laughs> Yeah, it's mostly for here, it's mostly for cute little pics for my friends' birthdays. Like, if anybody has a birthday celebration, uh, I always make them some sort of little like uh, picture of me giving them a present. Or something. Ah, oh, right, yeah. I need to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But before we officially start, we need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is favorite character. Well, Applejack is my favorite main six member, but I think overall favorite character, I might have to go with Discord. Hmm. Oh yeah, Discord. I love Discord. <laughs> I mean, ev- pretty much every time he's in an episode, you're guaranteed either for laughs or feels. I mean, like Twilight's Kingdom, Three's a Crowd, Return of Harmony, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good choices, man. Has there been ever a bad Discord episode? I wouldn't say bad, uh, but if I had to say like which one was a little like eh, whatever. Was it what about Discord? The episode where Discord uh, like has that running joke with all the main six members except for Twilight. That, that one was a little on the weaker side. Are you talking about yeah. the party one where he brought the ooze? No, no, no we're that's, uh, about that's making new friends that keep Discord. That one, was, that one was fantastic. Oh. I'm talking about, I think it's called What About Discord? Where I it's, uh. I don't know what you're on about. It's like orange you yeah. glad, it's like, you know, all them little in jokes. Oh, oh that yeah. one. Oh, yeah. that one. He had, he had, his, he had some cameo. funny bits, but the, the episode as a whole is kind of like just one joke repeated over and over and over again. Oh, yeah, that it's, one. It's kind of like, uh, like I know, I don't know if either of you watch Adventure Time. It's kind of like the episode Dream of Love, where the single joke is just played over and over and over again to the point where it's not funny anymore. Oh yeah, I, there's there's a theory to that. You make a joke, it's funny. You play it over and over again till it's not funny, and then you play it over and over again till it's funny again. <laughs> it's it's like, it's all about time. What about episode favorite one? Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of, well. My my favorite episode for a while was Apple Book Season, mainly because that's AJ's best appearance, and AJ is one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. But a lot of other ones have been kind of been in the running for a while. Like uh, I thought, of Mending Fences was really good. Uh, Slice of Life was really awesome. Um, a Saddle Row review from this season is spectacular. That's actually my favorite episode of this season so far. That was a really good one. Yeah. And so yeah, it's. I think I'm still gonna go with Apple Book season because that was kind of the one that made me into. I'm not gonna say it made me into a brony, but it was the one that really made me interested in the show. So I'm. I'm that would probably say that's my favorite. Mm. Nice Apple Book season. Apple Book season. Which one was that again? Because oh, there's there's a lot of episodes that. It was in season one. Season one. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Season one. It's kind of kind of shame. Season. Apple. That's Apple Jack's best episode, and it's so many seasons so many seasons ago. Apple Book season isn't that episode three, right? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, well, actually, no, I think that's that's four because we had the oh. two partner oh, and then Chicken Master and then Apple Books. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, so we did, so we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, that one's a good one too, and wow, that's a while back. I know. 
Still really holds up, though. Really funny, yes. really entertaining, great moral, great character for Applejack, just great all around. Yeah, and you can hear Applejack's high-pitched voice. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's before yeah. Ashley Ball knew what to do with her. <laughs> and Big Mac talks. A bit, yes. <laughs> yes, that was the before best. He went on a, before he went on a Yup Nope diet. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, how did you become a fan of the show? Fan works. It was actually fan animations that brought me to the, like, I saw a bunch of them online, like Epic Web Time and, uh, uh, Fufflepuff, which is probably my favorite series of fan works ever. And, um, those were the things that kind of got me interested. And then after those sparked, I started getting into an, the, the analysts, for example, Tommy Oliver and I Look Impossible a lot. And then that was pretty much the final nail in the coffin. It's like, okay, they're making this sound really awesome. So I'm actually going to check the show out. My nice. first episode, my first episode was less than pleasant. It was Owl's Well that Ends Well. Oh, oh gosh. Bad. It's like, is this? And then I was like, okay, I'll watch the second episode. Maybe it's better. And then it was Cutie Mark Chronicles. And I'm like, okay, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Owl's Well that Ends Well is not a good way to start. It's a lot of... No, not with Spike. Nah. Where's Spike? No, no. I love Spike. He's, he's, he's had some good ones. Like, Gone with a Fire was awesome. I uh, love Quest your Games was awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I love Spike, and I, I know I'm kind of alone on that, but I do like. Oh, yeah, I like no, Spike. I love Spike as well. I think he's poorly right, represented, but in Gone of Fire*, he had a right, proper good Spike episode. I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> it was like the first kick-ass episode of the season, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I yeah. like Spike too, but the problem with most of the writers, they don't know what to do with him. They kind of make him sort of just a butt monkey. Yeah, most of the but time. It's a shame. But, so which much is attention. a shame because when he's written right, he can be a really awesome supporting character. Or main he character. is a good character. He's a really supporting uh, friend and person. And then they just get um, written badly all the time to make him look like a jerk. And it's like, he's not a jerk. He's awesome. He's one of the best friends that Twilight has. Mm-hmm. Stop being yeah. mean to him. <laughs> uh, and if you want to read a really good Spike adventure comic, I think you should try and touch upon... The Celestia and Spike, or is it Celestia Micro? I forgot, but it's Celestia and Spike Friends Forever series, yes. Uh, it's Ooh. them working together to get a birthday gift for Twilight. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. I'll have to check this out eventually in my pile of things to check out <laughs> yeah. that you've suggested, Norman. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's for... How did you become a fan? And what do your family and friends think about your love for such show? I used to be in the dark with everybody, but then my brother found out, and he was he was cool with it. He doesn't watch it with me. He's not a huge, massive fan like I am. He doesn't even really give it the time of day. And my mom, I thought, was going to be really shocked, but one day it just came out when she saw me looking at the BromyCon page, and she watches it with me now. <laughs> oh, sweet. Oh. Wait, so your, your mom watches the show with you and it all started with BronyCon? Ah, uh, yeah. She's, she's actually cool with it. It was like, you know, it's like, well, what are you looking at? And I was like, nothing. And it's like, well, is that a convention page? It's like, no, no, nothing, nothing <laughs> at all. I opened the page and it's like, BronyCon? It's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, like the show. And it's like, oh, I think that's adorable. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Aww. Oh. Oh. All right, so well, I think your mom was fan now. So yeah, that's cool. RonyCon twenty sixteen going together. Yay! Yay! Yep. Skipping. Skipping must happen. <laughs> uh, skipping must happen. Yes, indeed. Panel RonyCon this year? No. Yes. Oh, awesome. Hey. Wish I could go, but no money's. Uh, money's bankrupt for me now. So your friends. Uh, friends, and no one knows about that. Uh, uh, aside from my Skype friends, the people in the community that I know, no one knows about. Literally, my mom and my brother are the only people that know about it. Ah, uh, all right. Then. So, thank you for answering the four important questions. Consider the gateway or the tool for starting the show. Yeah. So, we start the show with, I don't know, maybe news? Something like that? What about news? Yeah, what's on the agenda today then? Norman? Yeah. Well, I know... We like the arts. We are attracted to the pony arts by drawing or video and audio and whatnot. And, and animations. Yep, true that. All of the yes. And you guys know Tony Fleece, right? He's one of the comic artists for the comics, for the My Little Pony comics. And currently he's doing a sale on the original art for the comics. 
right now he's doing a sale on his website you can buy some of the original arts that he drew he drew for idw and he's selling them to the public mm. they're on sale for 15 percent off yes that too so some of the prices here well <laughs> i can't afford just because of the exchange rate it's not good but maybe for you at home who lives in the states canada or maybe the uk where money conversion is not that painful you can buy it some of his work goes for 100 bucks at minimum but that's before the discount <laughs> but they are awesome mm -hmm. looking this is original art that he drew like, yeah that's cool the lowest is going for 100 that's before discount so if you minus it off with 15 percent that'll probably get you what 95 bucks probably not including shipping which isn't too bad at all, and based on what I'm That's seeing here, uh, based on the link, it's actually pretty pretty awesome art. Yeah, it is also blue. So if you're a fan, go do support the artists. Like, I remember this once at a convention I went to. I got to meet Andy Price, and he sold his art. The problem is he didn't have a credit card machine, so no art for me. No original art. I had to buy prints. Aww. Aww. Cool. I would really love to get one of the pages for the original art it's like oh yes this is so awesome uh, like fan level intensified <laughs> it's like squee shatters windows <laughs> yes indeed or like Flufflepuff gas like <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that would be cool that would be cool that'd be awesome as a text alert yeah <laughs> but sometimes you won't hear oh, it yeah. sometimes you, you won't hear it so Finn talking about art Earlier you mentioned you had the Deviant Art and you drew things for your friends, right? Yes. But what are the things you do besides drawing for your friends? That's kind of it. I, I, I write poetry sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. A lot of it is I tend to focus more on my YouTube account because video making is kind of my, my passion, my thing. So, but the art is, is a nice little side product. It's a nice way to unwind. When you're, uh, you know, when you win a long day of video making, it's like, yeah, I don't feel like editing right now. Just, just draw something. Speaking of your video making, are you going to continue, like, any of your series that you started? Like your Equestrian yes. in a Nutshell, your Odd Job in, and FinChat yes. stuff. Uh, well, FinChat actually just got a new episode on Rainbow Dash. So, yes, that is definitely continuing. Yay! Um, and uh, Odd Job is continuing as well. I'm actually making, uh, I'm in two episodes are in the works right now. One with my friend Pencil Swift and one with my friend Lightning Bliss. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Lightning Bliss. I look forward to that one. Yay! And Yay! Uh, also, a question in that show I was hoping to continue, but that one episode took months and months of time to put together. Really? So... I really liked that one, like the diseases in Equestria. I was like, ooh, you've piqued my interest now. <laughs> yeah. And I had a lot of other ideas, like communications in Equestria, transportation in Equestria. I would have loved that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying it's over. I'm just saying it takes a while to make. So maybe, maybe I'll have that as like a major project while I do minor projects on the side, like my fin bits. Which have you have any seen fin bits? Yeah, I've seen yep. fin bits. It's it's an interesting way to review the show. If you take a look, see at other reviewers, almost the same thing. You do differently, they do differently, but the ending there was kind of interesting. Where you put a score system, it's really cool. Yeah, I like that. One thing I've always wanted to do for FinBits was have a pixel version of my OC doing little things in the background. Like if I say something about the episode, like, you know, maybe, uh, like it fails in this aspect, maybe it could be like my OC like falls over and like loses a life or something. You know, silly oh. little game tropes or something. But unfortunately, I can't pixel animate. If I could, I would have a lot more funny little bits like that. But at this point, it's just, you know, you got the, uh, you got the opening, uh, you got the Galaga type score system at the end in space. It's funny, after Spice Up Your Life is over, which is the last one until the hiatus, I'm going to save the game and get come back to it later. <laughs> Yay, awesome. Oh, that would be epic. So when yeah. did you start doing this concept of fin bits? Uh, this started beginning of season six, and I kind of wanted, I didn't want to be the typical stand in front of the, uh, stand in front of the camera with my OC and just have a little clips of the episode playing. I'm not saying that's a bad style, I'm just saying a lot of people do that. It's so uh, I wanted long. to do something a little bit different. So I decided, since these are going to be short videos, I figured it's like, okay, they'll have little bits of me every every week. Man, bits, like 8-bits, <laughs> video game. Hey, how about that? Yes. Since you were talking about the whole reviewing thing, would you do yes. the fin bits for Adventure Time as well, or are you sticking to MLP content for fin bits? Nope, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do Adventure Time episodes in the future, because... 
The main reason I only did MOP was because, first of all, the episodes are available, you know, almost immediately after they air. So yeah. that gives me the chance. Uh, Adventure Time, Cartoon Network's a lot more strict than Hasbro when it comes to censoring their episodes. But now that uh, after the hiatus, I'm hoping to do Adventure Time and MOP side by side. So Oh, that would be epic. Because I have yeah. enjoyed your Adventure Time reviews, what little they are that I have seen. It's mostly MLP that you've been leaning towards in your channel. And it's like, I like those, but more Adventure Time, yes. <laughs> Again, mostly mostly uh, because of uh, just availability of the episodes. Like, I think my last review that I did of Adventure Time so far was Evicted. Which is my mm-hmm. favorite, which is Marceline's introduction, since Marceline's my favorite character. And oh, she is now great. I'm working on two simultaneous, um, reviews, one for Adventure Time, one for MLP. I got Crystalling for MLP, and I've got, um, Flute Spell for Adventure Time, because that's one of my favorite episodes of the current season. Oh, that so, saves me another question, because I was wondering what is one of your favorite episodes from Adventure Time? My favorite of all time Adventure Time episode, Simon and Marcy. <laughs> Oh, that one. Oh, the feels. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the absolute oh. best episode of Adventure Time. Great backstory, great character. Feels a fantastic. Comedy is fantastic. The setup is fantastic. It was Rebecca Sugar's last episode before she left for Steven Universe, and it really shows. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it does. All them feel stabs that she does. <laughs> I still love I Remember You, though. That always gets me. Oh, yeah. Good times. Yeah. So many good times. Much said. Oh, well. It's delicious. I'm looking around your YouTube page here, and besides the fin bits and other things, I noticed that you do a lot of singing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> On occasions, yes. I, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a very good singer, but... Does it matter? I, I do consider myself at least a decent parody songwriter, mm. because... I've written, I've written us parody songs for my friends, like, uh, Sapphire Heart Song, Dr. Wolf. And also, I wrote These Bronies Are Inspired, which is my currently my most popular video. It's basically, we didn't start the fire with bronies. <laughs> yes, it was awesome. I don't believe you. These bronies are inspired. That was a lot of fun to sing. So. Oh. <laughs> it shows. Also, am I right in thinking that you like rap? Uh, I do, actually. <laughs> Will you and Ty and Dugga ever try a freestyle rap on a video? We should, we should, we should sometime. Yes, this cat wants to see it so bad. (laughs) But I've been told several times that the deer will not do rap. But I'm kind of still living in hope. I think I could trick him to come on and ask him to sing something. Record to Norma, do it! I'll do art for it! (laughs) I'll try! And Finn, you need to play along just to force him in. Yes. Pretend you know nothing about it. Yeah. That goes for you guys as well in the comments. You know nothing. Yep. You didn't see anything. Or hear anything. So shh. Wow, we're just your evil. See, Norman, you've come to the dark side. No. Welcome back. Welcome back. No. And have some cookies. Oh, God. Yeah. You have cookies. Oh, no. So, talking about you don't see anything, what about a pair of Transformers and Pony Glassers? <laughs> oh, wait, brilliant segue. <laughs> Thank you, I tried. Uh, <laughs> so apparently, um, Pony and Transformers glasses are hitting a place called Costco? Was it, is it? Yeah, no, Costco. Costco. It's a big yeah. department store. Yeah, so yeah, apparently they're hitting them in the stores, Costco, and there's multiple designs. So if you click on the links, you'll get to see them designs. and. The one on EQD is mostly about the ponies. I'm linking something here for you guys and probably the audience at home for the Transformers set. And they look cool. I like loyalty. Loyalty is the best design. I wish I needed glasses and was a child and could wear them. I actually have glasses in real life. Same here. I just bought a pair. I don't need glasses, but I want them. They look snazzy. Oh, you could. You just buy them. (laughs) But the problem with glasses is they're stupid expensive. Yeah. They are. Yeah, and yeah. If just the frame. The frame is like what? Ah, I don't know. For you guys, for me, it's about two hundred plus local bucks. So yeah, yeah. but that's including well, the glasses. I would just need the frame. I wouldn't need yeah. the prescription glasses because my eyes are like hot vision. So all I would need is frames just to wear, and I could look cool and snazzy and probably a dork. Mm, yeah, it could be a fashion statement, darling. Yes, I would look ravishing. I think. Yeah, but for generosity. <laughs> For generosity, 
they dropped the ball because we all know that Rarity wear glasses, but they didn't use her model of glasses. Yeah, oh, that's true been actually. Epic. Her designer glasses, that would be awesome. Yeah, but no, uh, <laughs> they went for the purple frames and whatever they had. And jewels, it was just like, yeah. nah. Yeah. Pretty sure, they guys. Loyalty is smart, though. But honesty, like, wow, damn be old people glasses, yo. Yeah. I probably would have worn hey, those, actually. That's, that's a sad uh, thing. The honesty looks a lot like, um, just almost like typical glasses, except you got AJ's cutie mark on the tip there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just basically the tortoise shell design. It's like, boom, have it's that. They're like exactly. sunglasses with like the sunglasses lens. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys take a look, see at the Transformers, the adventure model, that's good. I like that one. Oh, yeah. And Elite, <laughs> that's good too. Like, mmm. You say lead, Norm? <laughs> oh, God, no, stop. Stop it with your lead speak. <laughs> elite. <laughs> Towards leads, yo. <laughs> I ain't be yo. Do lead speak in the comments. I command you, listeners. No, don't. No, do These do glasses it. here to help your eyes. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so. Until you get them engineered out and get cyborg eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And talking about glasses, I see one drawing you made. Finn, with glasses, uh, two girls, one stallion. Oh, that's um, what's it called? That's that was a that was a birthday present for voice, voice of reason. Ah, well, glasses over there. See, segue again. Yeah, I want to roll. <laughs> Boom. I was worried about and, that segue. It sounded like it's going into dangerous territory. <laughs> There's the title of the picture. It's not my fault. <laughs> Oh, it's it's not it's Yarvin. not supposed to be it's not supposed to be based on what you think it's based on. It's just supposed to be him, his favorite character, and his his girlfriend. You know, as as a little treat for him. It's like, hey boys, we're here, we're here for you. It's like, oh man, it's like, there you go, buddy, have fun. Uh, God. Time for huggles and snuggles. Uh, ben the ship, a ben ship. So what do you use for? <laughs> so what do you use for drawing? Uh, I use a program called Pixelmator. Oh. And I also use a, uh, for the things that actually require me to draw, Pixelmator is more for editing the picture when I have the different frames together. And uh, I use a bamboo tablet and uh, Illustrator in order to draw stuff. Ah, alright, that's cool. So, Illustrator as in Adobe Illustrator, or? Uh, no, it's, I think it's just called Point Old Illustrator because I use a Mac computer, ah. so. I think you can get Adobe Illustrator, but with most of Adobe's product, they're expensive. Mm. Oh. Yes. Yeah. They do subscription based, but Yeah, I heard about that and I was just like, What? There's not a one time payment? It's a subscription thing. Ah! Technically the subscription (laughs) base would be much cheaper in the It's the same thing with Adobe Flash too. It's like ah. It's enslavement. That's all that is. (laughs) That's slave. So if you think about it, if you get monies back for the drawings that you do, it pay for itself. But uh, since you're but not you're in that constant cycle of paying and having stuff paid for you and working yeah you become a slave a slave to Adobe <laughs> slave labor yes I uh, know no. so basically you're doing free advertising with your artwork and you're paying to do it kind of huge <laughs> but talking about Adobe what do you use to edit your videos uh, I use Final Cut Pro, which is a Mac program. It cost me a lot of money because I had to save up a lot. I do have two jobs, so it wasn't too hard. It's very slow when you do big projects, but it helped me do way more than iMovie ever could. So I'm really grateful for that. Uh. Awesome. Is there a process you find hard when making videos, or is it pretty much easy now? Uh, editing is editing's actually my favorite part of the video because... It's really difficult voice acting wise because it's hard to get no background noise, you know, that's why I usually wait for a clear house. Doing the poses, I actually have a fresh set of poses for every single video. I never reuse the same pose twice. So oh. that's why I, I do that because I want Finn to have a lot of personality and it's like, if you see him using the same pose, it's like, no, oh, it's just the same thing over and over again. Those take a lot of time. Those are kind of tedious, but editing is when it all comes together. It's like, all right, here we go. This is the final step. And then we can upload it. Everybody can see it. So it's like, you know, you're seeing all the music, all the jokes that you made play, starting to play out. You know, your words are coming together. Everything's just meshing. And it's a really great feeling. And then I get to enjoy it. (laughs) Usually for me, I don't really like the editing part. I, I kind of do and don't. It's a tedious process of sitting down and listening. That's for audio with me. I, I'm, I don't remember how video works. Like, I think video is you need to cut in video here, cut video there. It's been a while since I did it. A little bit. For me, when it comes to audio, 
it's tedious. It's a tedious process of sitting down and doing it. Sometimes it can get really boring, but sometimes it's exciting. It's just re-listening again. And the problem is you're listening to the same bit over and over again just to get that natural sounding conversation. Yeah, just to make it sound perfect, like the timing and everything. That I understand. I was I was talking more about like the final feeling mm. of just getting it all finished, and it's like okay, ending's done. Let's just hit the play button and see where this goes, kind of thing. Mm, so all right, and the render, yeah. the rendering part, and suddenly so happen, <laughs> something happens in render, and they're like, oh no, I need to render this again. Oh, there goes. I'm glad I don't have to wait for rendering when I'm drawing pictures. It's like when you it's like it's done. <laughs> <laughs> it's finished. I'm out the door. Goodbye. Yeah, were you saying something? Oh yeah, I was saying it's it, it's really it's really a pain when your video is finished rendering and then you watch it again just to be sure and then you find a mistake and then you have to render it all over again. <laughs> uh, I did that for college for my final projects. Like, all right, done editing. Okay, render. Done. Play video. Why this this part skipping? Oh god, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. And you, no matter how many times, as for me, for me when I did my project, no matter how many times I tried to edit it. It never works. I got no idea. So the best solution is to cut it out. Cut it out, <laughs> and oh, it works. Like, god damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but point of frustration aside, Steph? Is there anyone you'd like to collaborate with, or you've enjoyed collaborating with, Finn? Uh, I haven't collaborated with too many people. Uh, I did do, I did collaborate with Dr. Wolf twice. Oh. Once for Analyst Anarchy, and again for a moment, and He's a really, really swell guy. I'll, I'll say right now. I mean, he's very straightforward with a lot of his, um, you know, uh, advances and replies, but he really did help me to get me where I am today. He was the one who invited me into the Rift Cafe. He's the one who got me in my first big collab. I made a whole, like, I think like 12 or 20 minute, uh, thing for his 30,000, uh, subscriber special. I have a lot yeah, of feelings for, the party. for him. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Cause I and think that's where I first saw you and I was like, ooh, interesting. Follow stock. <laughs> <Stop>. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I, I've worked with Dr. Wolf too on, well, mostly him coming onto the show. And he, like you mentioned, he's a swell guy. Like the first time we yes. talked to him, and I think I'm using a new hardware and everything. After an hour of talking to him, not recorded. Like, <laughs> hey, well done, Norman. <laughs> and also, I uh, I did really enjoy my cameo in one of Silver Girl's videos. <laughs> oh, which one was it? It was the slice of life, I believe. Uh, he had a bunch of his favorite, like, people in the community just sort of make little cameos. Like, he did Lightning Blaze, he did Doodle Dabble, he did Sketchy Changeling, and he did me. Which I, I was flattered. He offered me a position. I didn't ask for it. It's like, oh, you, you want me to be in your video? <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, I, yes. sure, I cool, I do it. <laughs> it's like, yes, I graciously accept this invitation. Excuse me for a minute, turn off my microphone. <laughs> is that when he was added to the Senpai Showcase? Yep. Him and Kim. Nice. How big um, is that uh, Senpai Showcase? Senpai Showcase. Is this on your channel? Yeah, it was, it was a little side gag in my, um, uh, my odd job in pilot, which I'm definitely continuing that series because yes. it was a ton of fun. I'm starting with Lightning Bliss and Pencil Swift, and if anybody else offers me a job, then we can keep it going. <laughs> I'm I hoping that at the end of every episode, I'm gonna have like uh, a little bit bag, which shows how close I am to that 4 million bit goal. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, like constantly adding more and more each time, which is a nice little progression thing. Ah, uh, cool, cool. Yeah. So, back on to cameos and collabs. How many people have you collabed with, and who do you want to collab with? Uh, I've collabed with, like I said, I've collabed with Doctor twice, a Silver Quill once. Actually, it's funny. I made a cameo on two slice of life reviews: <laughs> uh, one Silver Quill and one I ever heard of Red Cord. I... He's now called Channel Hopper. Mm, sorry, no. Oh, he's changed his name, has he? I've heard of him, but I haven't actually stopped him. He's, he's a pretty cool guy. He offered me a position, and it's like, uh, you want me to be in your review? Yeah, sure, man, why not? I've got some other collabs in the works right now. Like, um, I, I'm, ju- I'm gonna release a video very soon where I collab with, uh, Rose Pal, a very, really good friend of mine, and, uh, we're doing Lost Treasure of Grivenstone. Ooh. So. <laughs> I'll definitely tune into that. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a good episode. As far as one who I'd like to collab with in the future, I'd love to do a proper collab with Silverquill because his collabs are some of the best collabs in any Brony reviewer, in my opinion. He just brings out the best in anyone he's with. <laughs> uh, that, that is true. That is true. When you were talking about Silverquill, where do you want it to be featured? On his channel or on your channel? 
probably his channel because he's the one with the superior uh, editing and production values. I really do want it to be sort of like an extra chapter in his continuous um, series of reviews where he like does every episode in perpetual order. And then it's like, you know, I just show up one time. It's like, oh, hey, it's Finn kind of thing. So here's what I've been getting on my channel for the reviews that we do. It's like, when is Silver going to do more of his videos? Like, uh, don't ask me here. <laughs> I got no idea. It's like Silver Quilted <laughs> does the job. Kind of. Oh, yeah. yeah. Silver Quilted was actually uh, a really good idea because Silver, uh, after the fact, takes a long time. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. getting to hear mm-hmm. his instant thoughts on the episodes pretty much when they come out is a lot, is really, really nice to hear. Yeah, or hearing get, them on Norma's pushes. review show as well is also yeah. good. <laughs> And it just puts that uh puts that plushie of him to good use. <laughs> so true. Like it's so yes, cute. The plushie that Love he has, it. like yeah, I, I never seen someone use something that they got from a fan to good use. And this one is like, yeah. okay, I got this from a fan. What do I do? Videos. <laughs> yeah. He made it his own little uh persona. Yeah, it's not silver quill. It's silver quill that like yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Yep. There's no good segue for this, but I'm gonna tr- I'm gonna try because who here loves sun, sand, and beach? But who loves the beach and I, whatnot? Outdoor. I love the beach. Yeah, I, I, I'm near a beach and it's it's fun during the summer. Oh, that's cool. I up from the beach as well, yo. It's like beach high five. Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you live near Singapore, out of all places, it seems that they are doing. This giant pony storybook telling thingy with sets. Mm-hmm. And if you click on the links, you'll get to see them in action. They're doing this whole walk around them telling a story kind of deal. It's really cool. Sweet. Mm-hmm. I wonder if my friends actually heard about this who lives in Singapore. Like, yo, Rav, what up with this pony stuff in Singapore? You're neck of the woods. You heard about this. <laughs> yeah, if you click again, there's a lot of pictures. A lot of Pictures being submitted. There's one picture of Derpy Applejack. It does actually. Uh, a lot of things. It looks like fun going to the place and being in a real life Ponyville environment. It looks cool. Photo ops. So many photo ops. So many selfies. Yep, yep. But uh, honestly, this will be until the what's this? Seventeen, which is yesterday or today, depending on time zones. But when this Episode comes out, it's been a while. If you missed it, you could check out like some coverage of it or something, see how it went. Mm-hmm. And I just think this is pretty cool. I mean, I wish some other people with the experience who went there kind of talk about it. Just have more things like this all over the world, just random pony places popping up. That'd be awesome. That'd be fun. Traumatize other people, but it'd be fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's the news for this week, but we still have Finn on. It means we can talk to him more. Yeah. What's on your mind? Yay! Mm-hmm. So... I noticed that you were only running your channel for about two years now. By the way you t- told us from earlier on, it seems that you've been yeah. here from the very beginning, but you only recently doing videos? Yeah. I guess it was less to do with interest and more to do with time, because I have a very, very busy school and work schedule, which is explains why my uploads mm-hmm. are, tend to be a little very slow and were very slow in the past as well. But, uh, yeah, I figured it's like, you know, this is a fun little hobby, little escapist type thing I can do when I'm not in work or at school. So, you know. Mm. So, right now, as for this period of time, you're doing one video a week? Uh, more or less, yeah. I, I was, I was hoping to get the fin bits out as soon as possible, and for the most part, I was able to do that, but then when finals hit, I had to take a, a hiatus. Oh, so, naturally. I, yeah. Uh, now I'm now I'm trying to pick up where I left off. Once uh, I make it up to spice up your life, uh, in the hiatus sense, I'm gonna go back on my uh constant schedule where it's like uh episode comes out, video comes out very soon after. So basically, you're gonna do once episodes out, reviews out same day. Was well, sort of like wow. my initial reaction type review. It's it. it uh, a lot of people think that Finn bits repl- is replacing Finn's feelings, which is not true at all. Uh-huh. Because Finn's feelings is my favorite thing on my channel because it's it lets me do jokes and humor. I love making people laugh. So um, just because an episode gets a Finn bits doesn't mean it's not going to get a Finn's feelings later on. Mm. Yay! So basically, <laughs> it's the whole silver quill 
uh, after the uh, silver quilted, yeah, yeah. silver quilted yeah. versus after the fact deal where it's not a substitute, it's just an initial reaction type thing. Ah, uh, all right. I don't know, I mean, yeah. I, from what I saw of Finbits, it's almost like a full review. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's pretty good but, for a reaction thing. Yeah. With, with that, it's mo- it's like I go over the basic elements of storytelling and tell how good it is. And then in Finn's feelings, I add a lot more humor. Um, a lot more, I go as the episode goes along instead of just like separating the individual bits. Like I go story, I go characters, I go, uh, entertainment value. Um, but with Finn, with Finn's feelings, I go across the, uh, thing sort of like I'm watching the episode w- alongside the people watching with me. And I point out different things like is if this is wrong, if this is right, if I like this, if I like that, you know, kind of thing. Hmm, all right, all right. When reviewing a video, let's just take Finn's feelings, for example. What's the process like? Okay. Uh, first of all, watch the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, second of all, watch the episode again for review material. Uh, third of all, watch the episode again for jokes and see if I can come up with anything really funny to comment on. Uh, then obviously put all those notes together into a script. Um, once the script is over, I read the script. I sort of have the script on the sideline and Pixelmator on the other side, and I make the poses based on what parts Finn is actually going to be on screen for. And I, uh, I say like, you know, it's okay. He's going to, he's going to emote this. Okay. Let's make a pose for that. He's going to emote this. Let's make a pose for that. So I pose based on what the script says. Then the next part is I get any props or backgrounds that I might need. If I draw them, I draw them. Or if I just need a vector, I grab a vector. Um, and once everything is in place, I have all my assets in the folder. I have the script ready to go. Uh, I record my voice lines. And then once the voice lines are ready, that's pretty much my signal to go for editing. Yay! So <laughs> how long does it take you from beginning to end? Very, very long time. I would say if you, uh, if you cancel down my work and school schedule, I would say like maybe two weeks of nonstop work for video. Oosh! Ooh, this takes a long it, time. It does. But it, it's worth it. I think, I think they're pretty good videos. Hmm. Yep. I would say so. Glenn. Subscriber, <laughs> fan, stalker. Thank you. <laughs> kind of biased here. <laughs> Alright. So, have you read the My Little Pony comics? Ah, one of them. I've read the, uh, the Cadence and Shining Armor comic, mm. which I really loved, but I don't have the money to really pick up any comics at the moment, so I'm kinda, kinda, you know, ah. I, I, I have, I have interest, but I don't have time or money at the moment. Well, let's just say that if the comics are f- available for you for free, would you review them? I would, absolutely. I think if I if I took a genuine interest in them, which based on the one I did read, that they do look genuinely interesting. Of course, yeah, I definitely review them. Hmm. All right, that'll be cool. Well, I review them too, and the way we review things on this show is not the way you review it. Let's just say that your numbers and my numbers are way off. <laughs> <laughs> but still, people do like to hear us banter for yeah. an hour long about banter for the win. Yeah, and now we're long about why this character is just dumb and not smart. Like, oh god, no. Uh, of course, <laughs> Already started. Open the floodgates. Yep. But anyway. Yeah. Good to know that you have an interest because comic, the comics are really good. The comics are really fun. Oh, yeah. If I ever do do comic reviews, I'd probably have like some alternate, uh, like some kind of alternate thing for them. Like Finn's feelings is for episodes. Finn bits is for initial reactions. I'm also thinking of doing something called Finn's feelings on fan works mm. where I'm like, I'm like sitting in a library or something and I'm like, you know, if I read fan fiction or like critically a- analyze art, you know, in your typical like robe, slipper, smoking a pipe type thing. All right. <laughs> oh, Those are, nice. Yeah. But do you think that's a good idea? Because when it comes to the official product, you can just go at it. But when it comes to fan works, People might get salty, really, really salty. Oh yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of those people that like, you know, picks it apart. Like, well, I do pick it apart, but I don't do it harshly. I do it sort of like a friend would give friendly criticism to someone. You know, if I don't like some, if I don't like something, I'll be like, okay, this, this was good, but this could have been a little bit better, type thing. Mm. You know. Yeah, I guess you'd have to be really careful if you're commenting on someone's artwork, because some people can get really touchy about that, especially when it's <laughs> criticism. Oh, gosh. That's why I always go for balance. I never want to be 100% negative or 100% positive because mm. 
that's that's not a good review. That just means that you're either 100% praising it or 100% panning it, and that's not fair to the person who made true it. That, true that. No, it's not. And that's why I noticed about yeah. one of your videos, the fin bits with Apple Jacks it off. It's it has its up and down in terms of oh, this part is good, this part is bad. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, that was fair. <laughs> Considering your love for Applejack. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. Even putting all her biases aside though, I do really like that episode. It's a nice, it's a nice chill episode. Yeah. I really like the message in that episode. Mm, yeah. yeah, that message is, so it's something that we all can learn from because we are creative people. We do the same thing so over and over again. So we need to step back for a bit and see how can we maximize our time. Yeah. yeah. You know, make, use your time efficiently type thing. Yeah, because if you're too busy doing your routine, you kind of lose track of time and you don't see that there's a problem until someone goes, hey, yo, what you doing all that for? And it's like, oh, oh, oh. It's like, what's this? It's like, I'm just doing my daily routine. And then they're like, yeah. why? And it's like, oh. It's my thing. It's like, what what you say? Like, oh, oh, now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> the blood sacrifices <laughs> are not needed it. anymore. Oh. Chicken noises are not needed. <laughs> uh, oh, well. So I think that's for me and my questions. Is there anything that we're leaving off in? Uh, not that I can particularly think of. I'm trying to think of some of the previous questions if I answered them completely correctly. Um, oh yeah, I do. There was, there was one thing I did want to say. Um, one other person that I do really want to collab with besides Silverquill, uh, or two people actually, um, uh, Josh Scorcher and K- KP, the former of which being relatively possible, the latter of which being almost impossible. First of all, KP is very, uh, like, isolated from a lot of the fan base. She kind of, like, just lives on her own little island with her little production factory of videos. Not that that's anything <laughs> against her. It's just <laughs> she doesn't interact that much. But, uh yeah, she's the person who got me into the community. She's the one who made me want to make videos. And I still do. F- I know a lot of people are kind of against her because they think she has a big ego or they think that she doesn't socialize very much. But I like her a lot. She was a big inspiration for me, so I know it's likely I'm never going to get the chance to, but if by some miracle I get the chance to work with her, that'd be amazing. Well, you don't know until you ask, I guess. I guess. Thanks, Finn, for coming on, and it's been fun having you, man. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. If you ever wanted yeah, to come on again, you <laughs> say the word. Yeah. Uh, invitations there, like, you're, more, you're always welcome to come on again. Sure. And maybe we could talk to you about something else, like your idea for Finn Reads. <laughs> <laughs> Finn's feelings on Finn works. Yeah, bro, bro, I don't know. It's like you got Finn feelings for uh, the episode. Finn beats for your initial thoughts. Maybe Finn f- reads about fan fiction. Maybe, maybe. Or have, maybe have Finn a Finn stares fiction. at stuff. Finn, stares he... Finn fiction. Oh God, that's, oh, that wait. is good. Yes, that is a good one. <laughs> Finn fiction. Write it down. That's for free, man. Finn fiction. All of the yes. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, that's a good idea for you to take away. Yeah, yeah, that's yours, man. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, no problem. So anyway, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. You can also catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And I'm sure that I've worked out how to manage all the things back together because the last time we talked about this, Instagram was being a butt. And I think I fixed it now. So let's hope that if I Instagram a picture, it goes on to all the social medias. So yay. So what you get for teasing me about food, Norman. Instagram go and I'll be teasing you again with more foods for the future. No! <laughs> and Lurk, what about you? Where can the public find you? Oh, well, you can always find me at lurkacat.deviantart.com or Facebook forward slash Highland Road. Ah, alrighty then. And Finn, where can the public find you? You can find me at my YouTube page at Finn the Pony or my DeviantArt account at Finn the Pony 17. Ah, awesome. No Twitters and Tumblrs? Uh, no Tumblrs or Facebook yet, ah. but I should get on that. Ah, alright. Technically... You should. Stalking would be easier. <laughs> uh, there wasn't a problem there. You, you can do that. People watch you and stuff, but you get her. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So... Like, I'm always watching. Always watching! Oh, uh, well, it'd be that, like, for Hurricane Flood to try scene. No. 
So anyway, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyBalife.com. And also, please subscribe to the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast thing on the iTunes and Stitcher Radio. We need the love there because from what I saw, nobody loves me. You know, sad. Aww. Aww. But anyway, with that aside, I'm sure you guys will. Uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Lurker Cat. And I have been Finn the Pony. And we'll catch you guys next week with another fun show. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.